Today, I will talk about 12 very important ICT advices. The first advice I want to give you guys is always having a daily bias or an hourly bias at any time. And the reason behind this is because when you have a daily or hourly bias, it can then help you on the lower time frame when you're trying to frame a trade entry, then you can determine if you need to long or short. And it's also just a great thing to have in general, right when you're coming into the charge, you know if price is bearish or bullish. The second advice I want to give you guys is having an obvious draw on liquidity. And we want to have an obvious draw on liquidity on both the lower time frame and on the higher time frame, because then it can help us to understand what price is reaching for. And a draw on liquidity is also needed when we're looking for the daily bias. A example of this draw on liquidity could be right here, where we can see we have low resistance liquidity and price is just breaking highs over and over and over again. And that kind of signals to us that price is looking towards this low resistance liquidity. And finally, at Wednesday, 15 May, price reached this low resistance liquidity, also trading in all time highs. The third advice will be looking at the economic calendar. And the reason we want to look at the economic calendar is because then we can identify where the high impact news drivers are located at. For example, here we can see for the next week, we have FOMC meeting at Wednesday. And then at Thursday, we have our high impact news drivers at 8.30 on employment claims. And when we have high impact news drivers, we could be anticipating expansion afterwards. The first day could be a good trading day. The fourth advice is only trading in higher probability conditions. And it is different from person to person what you identify as higher probability conditions and where your setup play out at the best. Because some people can find no news day as high probability conditions and some people can find news days as high probability conditions. Personally, I find my setup at the best when we have high impact news drivers. And then afterwards, that's where I started looking for my trading strategy. Or when we have a obvious draw on liquidity or an obvious daily slash hourly bias, then on that day, I can also start looking for my setup targeting those high probability areas. The fifth advice I want to give you guys is that you always want to trade your strategy. As when we're trading our strategy, we're keeping our results consistent. Because when we're not trading our strategy, it can be hard to keep our results consistent as we're not taking the same trend entry over and over and over again. An example of this could be right here. So let's say I found this IFG according to my strategy. Then I take this IFG and it goes well. But then maybe I found another setup and this setup does not really follow all my rules. Let's say such as this IFG. I take my entry based on this IFG and then I put my stop loss at this high and target to the score ratio. We can see price stops us out. That could be a short example. So we always want to trade our strategy and not just trading every random setup that we see looks good as that's hard to keep consistent. The sixth advice is not over trading. And this may seem a bit boring, but it is true. As when you're over trading, it's hard to keep your results consistent and you're probably not going to find an A plus setup every time as your strategy may play out once or twice a day or just every time there's high probability conditions. And when you are trading when there's not high probability conditions and your setup is not an A plus setup, not following all the rules, it's most likely not going to work out. For example, let's say right here, this follows all my rules. I take it great in profit, etc. But then let's say over here, I find the, this IFG. We can see it does not follow all my rules. I exit the trade when price closes beneath it, and we can see price makes it close beneath it, and then that's a loss. So not over trading is a very important factor. The seventh advice is that you need to have at least one to two risk reward ratio. And I think this is very important because let's say that you take 10 trades and you risk $10 put trade, and then you win four of the trades and you lose six of the trades and you have at least one to two risk reward ratio, well, then you wouldn't even be within a loss as you would actually have $20 in profit because these four trades has accumulated $80 because you took at least one to two risk reward ratios to so the four winning trades. And then the six lost trades would have min or put you in minus with $60. So then you have a net profit of $20. So that's why we want to have at least a 1 to 2 risk reward ratio because then your win rate doesn't need to be that high before you are profitable. The eighth advice is that you always want to be trading within the ICT kill zones as that's where most volatility released into a market and also where the high probability conditions occur. 
And these kill zones or the sessions I would recommend trading within is the London, PM, and New York session. And I personally trade within the New York session as it's both suitable for what time I want to be trading within. And that's where I also find my trader play out most of the time. So it's perfect for me. And if you just want an indicator that can show you these kill zones, I would recommend the one that's called the ICT kill zones plus pivots TVO, as that's the one I'm using. The ninth advice is specifically for people who have just gotten into ICT trading or the people who's trying to build their own ICT strategy. And it is basically that you don't want to overcomplicate things, as there's a lot of ICT concepts to learn or use when building your own strategy. So taking it in your own pace, not speeding it up or anything like that, and really focusing on what works best for you is very important. So that's the ninth advice. The tenth advice is that when you're building your own strategy and trying to put everything together, you want to have between two and nine rules, in my opinion. Now, of course, there isn't any formula of the perfect ICT trading strategy, but I just like to stay within that range as I tend to get overwhelmed by all the rules I have to remember if I go over nine rules and also forget some of them, and it is a bit difficult to build a strategy based on one rule. And my personal strategy is actually made of six rules. So that's just about in the middle. And that have actually helped me focus a lot more on my trading strategy. And my strategy is also built around a singular ICT concept, which is I understand the best, which I do also recommend. And it is a very important factor, but it all comes down to personal preference when it comes to the rules. 11th advice I will give is that you want to journal your trades. As when you're journaling your trades, you can start to see what you're doing wrong within your trade setup over time and then correct that and see if that works. And then the journaling platform I use is mainly Notion, but you just need a place where you can take a picture and write down what occurred. And an example of this would be, let's say right here, I take a trade entry based on this Favelli gap because it followed all my trading rules and it goes well. Then I take a picture of this by going up into trading view where it says take a snapshot, copy image, then go to a trading platform and then paste that in and write down what happened within this trade. So that's mainly how you can journal. And I would recommend both journaling winning and losing trades as you're learning from both of them. The 12th advice is very boring, but it's also at the same time very important. It's focusing on our psychology. And the reason we want to do this is because when we are not worrying about the outcome of the trade as it is occurring, and also not hesitating taking trade entries, we're going to be better traders, and this is also going to be easier for us not getting worried about the losses. As we know, in the future, we are going to see profitable days. And thinking about a loss as a just short-term drawdown also helps a lot. One approach which I like to use is loving the outcome. And that basically means no matter what, if we lose or win, we are always going to be happy about what happened. And not let it emotionally affect us in any way, or letting it ruin our day. One of the most important things which I believe in within trading is always being happy. 